so our land, uh, the land question, um, our relationship with the land, the land which is of course the foundation of all humanity, all society, all economy, and um, all ecosystems on this planet worth fighting for and building from the small seed to much bolder, not just gestures, but structures um, to hold uh, justice for all food producers and those of us who eat, which is most of us. And so now we're going to move from the global context and what uh, factors are shaping our relations with the land to what's happening right here locally um, and the encounter with the banks um, and the way that citizens are mobilizing to, all, to articulate a, a, an alternative. So I'm very pleased to introduce the Green Party mayor of Richmond, California, not just a company town. <laughs> right here, right now. Thank you, ma'am. This is Gail McLaughlin. I'm just really pleased to be here um, to share in, in, this, in this struggle that we're, we're all about, you know, to really reclaim, reclaim people's rights, reclaim the land, um, allow people to stay in their homes when we have all these forces against us internationally. Certainly in this country, as we focus more back locally here, um, we have the, the massive banks that have foreclosed on people um, all over this country. And we in Richmond, um, California, were hit really, really hard. So um, when I was asked to come here, you know, I was, I was asked to talk about this, what's known as the eminent domain program. I think some of you may have heard about it. It's a, you know, I'll tell you more about it as uh, I have a, a short uh, PowerPoint here. Um, and I thought, um, well, this is an ag urban agriculture um, symposium, so um, how does it tie in? And it does tie in in a number of ways. First of all, we're talking about keep keeping people in their homes to stabilize neighborhoods, to keep um, our neighborhoods and further revitalize them. And urban agriculture is all about revitalization and and stabilization of our of our health and our well-being and our rights to uh, have food security. And we in Richmond, of course, have a wonderful urban agriculture program, and you'll hear a lot of, uh, from uh, Doria Robinson, who will talk about that later. But um, I want to share with you the details um, of this program. I, you know, I'll just go over them. Um, it kind of can get complex, but I'm going to just uh, give the basics. Um, so you understand how we're standing up to the big banks in Richmond in terms of them attempting, as they have done already, to continue this ripoff of people um, by way of them um, letting homes, you know, raising mortgage rates um, and leaving people with, uh, you know, a displacement scenario virtually. People have faced the foreclosure situation and, and left uh, in real dire straits for their families. So. Let me begin here. So anyway, the name of this program, and I'm hoping I know the right um, button severing here. I'm used to, not used to using a laptop. I'm using, Try that. was it this one would work? Yes, that it works. is. Okay, and that goes back. Okay, so this um, program is, is actually called the Richmond CARES program, and CARES stands for Community Action for um, Restoring Equity and Stability. And uh, it's a local solution to the housing crisis that we have experienced. And um, this PowerPoint was actually put together by some of our grassroots partners because changing things, as was stated clearly um, already, uh, takes the grassroots, takes people who really are, are not, are going to resist. And um, ACE is one of the partners on the grassroots level that we work with, that the city of Richmond works with, and, that, and ACE stands for the Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment, and also the Home Defenders League. So, the damage done. 4.5 million homes were lost since September 2008. Latino household wealth decreased by 66%. Black household wealth decreased by 53%. These are national figures, yes, so I'll get to some um, more local situations as we go forward. Um, and it's far from over, again, national figures. 4.5 million homes delinquent or in the foreclosure process. 
9.3 million homes are still deeply underwater, which of course means that their mortgage that they have to pay on is far greater than the, um, the value of their homes. And the January 2014 report, um, this was, um, I believe it was a Freddie Mac, uh, uh, Freddie, uh, yeah, Freddie Mac report that predicts an increase in foreclosures in 2014. So here in um, Contra Costa County, which is the county that Richmond is in, one in five homes are underwater. Now in Richmond, we have nearly 50% of homes that still have mortgages underwater. So it's clear that um, here's a, the dark red are the areas of um, most uh, underwater. And you can see how the, uh, this is a full Contra Costa map, how um, heavily underwater the crisis, uh, the situation still is for so many homeowners. So in Richmond, the magnitude of the crisis. Um, let me start out by saying that we are a working class majority people of color community, 40% Latino, 26% African American, and I think we have 16% Asian American, 13% white people. So we have a majority people of color community. Um, when the crash happened, homes lost on average 66% of, the, of their value. Some 16% of homes lost to foreclosure since the crisis, so, which means that thousands, we had thousands of foreclosures in Richmond and um, homeowners and tenants displaced. So most neighborhoods still have from 30 to 50% of their homes underwater. Um, so the, the effort that we're doing is uh, seeking to acquire from the banks the mortgages, these deeply underwater mortgages, so we as a city can help reset these mortgages in line with current home values. And we're talking about a certain type of mortgage because some of the mortgages, we, uh, we can't, the way they're set up in terms of the federal government, um, the, uh, the Fannie and Freddie um, loans are not available for principal reduction, but in terms of um, a certain type of loan, we can help, and we can help big time. We could also by pressure the federal government to um, make changes so that we could also help um, others um, who have these other you know, uh, government-type loans. But the type of loans we're helping um, are people who have these, what are called private label security loans. And they were a lot of the homeowners that were targeted by predatory lending. Um, it was clear that um, the banks targeted people, um, and often people of color, low-income people of all colors, um, with bad loans. I mean, they they deliberately gave bad loans to um, to to a, a large sector of the population. When they could have sold them, um, they could have provided a standard loan, but they you know they sold these bad loans to them and. Uh, then as the interest rates went up or balloon payments went up, people were left without having the ability to pay the mortgages. And then they said, sorry, we're going to foreclose, that, for, foreclose on you. So this scenario is, is one that still faces us. So we came up with this local solution. Actually, it was uh, the innovation of the program was through a um, Cornell University professor, but I'm... I'm happy that we in Richmond decided to champion it and to bring it um, to really face up to the, the situation and um, you know, stand up to the banks on behalf of our community. So what this does is it focuses on troubled underwater mortgages held in these private security pools. These are pooled loans. You know, there was a way that they, the banks sliced and diced the loans and sold them to different investors all over the world. You know, it's a casino on, on Wall Street that, that occurred. And uh, um, now they say they can't help these homeowners and uh, they can't reduce the principal. Well, we think there's a solution. So we're working to acquire these loans um, and restructure them so that the homeowners can refinance or modify into a new loan in line with the current value of the home and current market interest rates. 
And we would like to do it, have the banks voluntarily sell us these mortgages. We're willing to pay fair market value as a city. We do have a private partner, uh, which are investors who want to invest in this program, helping the city to acquire these loans and um, reset them uh, on behalf of the uh, affordability of the homeowner. So, but we also, the banks have not been very cooperative. In fact, they sent the, they uh, sued the city of Richmond um, even before we've done anything because we said if you don't do it voluntarily, if you don't let us step in here and fix the situation by you, you tell us that you can't reduce the mortgages, reduce the principal for the homeowners because these loans are pulled out all over the world and you sliced and diced them and you can't get all the investors together to agree to modify the loan. Well, sell it to the city. You know, the banks still are the servicers. Sell it to the city and then we'll be the mortgage owner temporarily and reduce the um, principal and put it right back in the hands of the homeowner. The homeowner will stay in their home. We won't have um, our neighborhoods go down into blight. We won't have our, um, the crime go up in our neighborhoods because there's empty homes. And um, you know, crime, of course, uh, sometimes uh, attracts to scenarios like uh, with vacant buildings. So we think we're fixed. We know we have a fix here. And the banks. Instead, even before, we, we, what we said was, if you won't do it voluntarily, we will utilize eminent domain. Because we as a city have an, have an obligation, in my view, to, for the public good, for the public purpose, um, bring our stabilize our, neighbor our neighborhoods. And as long as we have this foreclosure crisis, this hemorrhaging, because one house goes into a foreclosure, another goes in, another one, uh, the neighborhood goes into decline, and uh, everybody's property taxes, um, everybody's property values go down. So you're not fixing it. We want to, if you don't do it voluntarily, selling it to us, we will take it with eminent domain. Well, they took us to court and said, um, even though we haven't even taken anything by eminent domain, you know, you're considering it, so therefore we have a right to sue you. Well, the judge just threw it out of court, said the city of Richmond hasn't done anything yet. You don't just, you don't just <laughs> sue somebody for thinking about something. But we, we, also, we also think, know that we'll win in court. We really, really believe that we have the sound legal, um, legal argument because this is a public purpose to save our neighborhoods, to keep our property taxes stable so it's not, you know, the values go down, the property taxes go down, the city doesn't get enough property tax to supply the purposes, the services that um, the public needs. So um, we, we believe we will ha win this in court. So here's, I'm not gonna go through this chart fully, but I will touch on a couple things. It's an example. Let's say the original home value um, and the mortgage was $400,000. Well, today, the uh, home is only worth $200,000. So, you know, there's still this large mortgage for what's now uh, the val uh, value of a home that's, you know, half of what it was. Well, once we acquire the, um, the loan, we will reset the um, mortgage to 190,000. So the homeowner at least has some equity in the home. Right now they have a negative equity because um, they're so underwater. So um, this would give them um, some equity in the home and they would be stabilized. Their original monthly payment um, would, was uh, 1,798. Now their payment would be 907. Affordable mortgages mean people have more money in their pocket, means they can um, go and frequent our local businesses and our local economy recovers, which is what we want and need. So the, this, is more than, um, this is more than just a campaign to restore community wealth. It's about community control, and that's really about this whole um, symposium, this whole summit. It's about you know, who controls the land. 
Do people have a right to have, you know, a little piece of land with a home on it? Do people have a right to grow their own food? Or do the big banks and big land owners own this planet? Well, we, we know they, um, that they don't have these rights, but this is, the, this is the David versus Goliath struggle that we're in. We have to unite so that we show them this is our planet and it does not belong to a tiny percentage of people just because they have um, great wealth. So um, we, you know, so this is truly um, about uh, communities fighting back. And um, so this is just a, a little bit about the elements of the campaign in Richmond. We have a broad coalition, a partnership between the community, the city, and the private partners I mentioned to provide the funding and expertise. We've had massive outreach, community engagement, and action. Um, this is our vice mayor at the podium um, in front of City Hall. We had, you know, we've had many great rallies, and we, when it's come to City Council, we've had, you know, Hundred, I, I think the last time it was close to a hundred speakers. So it's really well, it's really popular, and I think it's popular all over based on the amount of emails and messages that I get from people saying, you know, keep up the um, the the good work to uh, hold these banks accountable. So here's just some pictures um, of some of the work that uh, some of the rallies and press conferences we've held, and we've made. Um, the New York Times, The Nation, um, gotten a lot of press, which is good because it, it's showing how important this issue is. And so here are other cities. We know that Richmond is but one city. We need, we need a movement of cities, other elected officials who show the political will to stand, as I think they should, for their communities rather than for Wall Street. And so Seattle, Washington is looking into this, uh, Newark and Irvington, New Jersey, Minneapolis, Baltimore, New York City is looking into it, San Francisco, San Pablo, Vallejo. Um, it's spreading. People are in, down in Southern California. There's um, some cities. I've been talking to mayors and council members who are really um, what we what we the challenge is always is to get our colleagues on board you know one or two members of a city council uh, can't move it forward you have to have the majority so we're we're in the process of gaining um, a national movement with cities joining together because we think we'll be more effective in terms of um, um, standing up to the banks and we think the banks might recoil eventually and just not um, not press this and say, hey, it's easier for us to just, you know, let the cities ha take the pro these uh, homes. I mean, we're not planning to take, you know, these homes forever just during a crisis, which we're in. And if it comes again, you know, we'll want to deal with it again. Um, but we feel we have the obligation to do this on behalf of the community. So what's happen, happening next, uh, there's a release of a report coming out sharing that uh, recovery hasn't arrived in hard hit communities. Um, we expect to have three to five cities joining us um, by summer. Um, we're gonna do a final attempt at a negotiated solution. You know, banks, we're giving you another chance. We don't wanna use eminent domain, it's a tool. You know, let's negotiate. So you're going to get your fair market value of the mortgage. Let's figure out what it is. Let us have it. Let's not turn this into a big court case. So far, that hasn't worked. So, <laughs> so we figure, um, you know, late this year, uh, barring a negotiated settlement, this will end up in court. So that's the program in a, in a nutshell. And it, it's just so, so fitting that it, um, it should be talked about in the context of this, um, this particular um, panel here. Because we're talking about security, whether it's food security, whether it's having a roof over one's head, whether it's having a right to own, you know, own a little piece of the American dream, the so-called American dream. Well, in Richmond, 50% of our community rents. You know, so we want to move more people into affordable home ownership. And instead, what's happening is foreclosures are moving people out of, of the experience of having their own home. Um, we also, um, I, I just want to touch a little bit on the, um, 
the way we can help with urban agriculture. Doria is going to go, um, going to talk more about this, but it does tie in because when you have stable neighborhoods, we have vacant lots, you know, within our neighborhoods, and many of them have been utilized as community gardens. We want more of them utilized. What can we do as a city to help that? Can we change um, our zoning laws to have urban agriculture zoning? That's something I'm exploring. Um, land trusts, I know that's something that, that uh, we've uh, talked about, and um, we have we have space uh, in North Richmond. North Richmond was a wonderful, wonderful um, farm area. And I know um, we have the county side of North Richmond and the city side of North Richmond, but there's a lot of, a lot of space there that was used for flower growing and such. And we would like to clean it up and uh, have that put in the hands of the community for urban agriculture. Um, food co-ops, and potentially utilizing eminent domain for acquiring land. Too many landowners hold on to the land, uh, apparently for tax write-offs and such, or maybe they're holding on to it to develop it at some point, speculated, speculating. But if it's just sitting there, it's another form of blight, right? Uh, not only the vacant homes, but the vacant lots. And so... Um, you know, we think like, I think it, it was Boston, um, that uh, Dudley Street neighborhood, that um, the city of Boston um, entrusted the community with eminent domain. So I'm going to explore that further, you know, and now apparently, I know Doria's visited there, and um, it's an incredible, you know, situation with community gardens, urban agriculture, affordable housing, um, schools, all on this eminent domain acquired land. I mean, that's the power of when you have a community organized and you have some allies on a city council. And so that, I think, is very important. Either you have allies on your city council, or if you don't, elect some, <laughs> you know? It's, it's the way of the future, so you can utilize the, you know, change the zoning laws, utilize a city's power and responsibility to protect the, um, the public good and, and utilize eminent domain for a public purpose. So uh, I'm going to just end with, um, I took a trip to Cuba um, in December. And because uh, Richmond has a sister city um, with Cuba, you know, Regla Cuba is our sister city. And we had the opportunity to visit an urban agriculture cooperative in Cuba. And it was just phenomenal. The, the young woman who um, managed the farm, she was in some... Um, I forgot whether it was science or math, or she was in a, an academic profession, and her father was a farmer, and, and he wanted her to get involved in this, and she said, well, listen, you know, I'm going to give it a try, and I'm not going to carry on in my career as I had thought to right now. The jobs wasn't quite uh, as available. So she just got, she just ended up embracing it with every ounce of her being. I mean, she just loved it. She showed us everything, and she showed us it with such love and enthusiasm um, that you couldn't help but love it yourself, you know, to have someone so attached to the land, feeling so empowered by what she's doing, um, and the fruits uh, of her work and those that she works with were just uh, phenomenal and how they're helping the economy of Cuba. Um, and Cuba has done some phenomenal stuff with sustainable agriculture, but this is a co-op, worker ownership. It's not a, a state farm, so it's a, a new uh, strategy that uh, Cuba is utilizing and which is something we're utilizing in, in Richmond too. We're having a, uh, we're trying to get more and more cooperatives going. So lots of new strategies, lots of ways to show ownership, community power, and uh, you know, there are big corporations, there are big banks, um, there are big landowners, and they have a lot of influence and power, but as a, a reporter friend of mine often uh, says, they're nothing like the power of people when organized. So thank you for giving me an opportunity to share with you today. <laughs> <laughs>